Welcome to this tutorial on importing images into Superstar. As you can see, I've already got the S5 sequencer open, and I'm using the Rocky Merry Gentleman MP3 song, um, and I am using the 16CCR RGB tree preview. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to change my select from cells to rows, so that it'll select a whole row when I click on it. Um, and I'm going to say I'm going to create instead of just select, and I'm going to collect a, a create a superstar effect. So now I'll click on the ribbons plus RGB star row to edit my CCRs and the RGB star, and that'll select the whole row and open up the superstar sequencer. So from here, if we're going to import images, um, we want to open the image setup dialog box, which to open that you can either click on this little pencil button um, or you can go to Tools and select Images. Um, and to import an image, we just go where it says Import Image and click on the Import Image file, which as you can see, it supports all sorts of um, pretty much any image uh, file. So in this case, I'm going to use this Merry Christmas, um, as you can see, a, a PNG file, and just say Open. And as you can see, that just imports that image and puts it on top of our grid. It hasn't been um, converted to the grid yet, um, but at this point, here's where you can do some editing of the image before it does that conversion. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, the uh, grid changed from that standard grid to a large grid to fit the, the image, um, which by standard, that large grid is 64 by 50, um, but if uh, you would need to change that for your setup, you can. Um, like say I wanted to make this shorter, um, which notice it doesn't update it until you click on large again. Um, then it will just make that shorter, um, or you can make it wider. Um, just remember to click on large again to make it refresh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 64 by 50. Um, but uh, as you can see, you can move it um, left and right. Uh, I'm going to move it up to 0, 0, so it's in this top corner, um, which I suggest doing for all of your images because that's where it um, starts detecting um, where your image is. So if it's over here, it's it's going to think your image is, is from that corner. Um, uh, you can also make it uh, wider or you know you can change the, the width and height here. Um, you can even rotate it uh, using this rotation angle um, and you can enlarge it and shrink it so that it makes it bigger and smaller proportionally. Um, it does the width and height at the same time. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this. Um, and, whoops, move that over. There we go. And now it's ready to be converted um, to our grid. So you do that by setting, uh, by clicking on this set grid bitmap from image file. Um, and then it detects those pictures and puts it on the grid. Um, now here, if you wanted, you could change you could edit the the colors a little bit like say you wanted this bright red here you could start changing that um, and then if you changed your mind um, note that there's no undo while you're drawing on the map or on the grid um, but you can hold down shift and click on another color and it will um, get that color loaded here so then you could essentially erase what you've already done um, I like the way it looks so I'm just gonna leave it like that um, and also note that with the green grid, it makes the picture look more green than it actually is. If you compare those two pictures, this looks much more green. So if you wanted to change that to make the colors look a little more true to how they would look on your lights, you can click on this dark gray grid, um, and then it'll end up matching this more and what your lights actually look like. Um, so I think that picture is all set, so I'm going to set a name over here. I'm going to call it Merry Christmas and just say add and now it's ready to be used um, in an effect so I'm gonna change my grid back to standard so we can see our CCRs um, and the star and you'll see that some of it is on the star because um, this is where the the grid is for editing the star um, which you can fix that by changing it from auto clip to manual clip so if I just click on manual clip now we have control to change where this little yellow rectangle is. Um, when we change that, just like how it says here, by holding down shift and using the left mouse button to just drag how big we want it to be. So, whoops, uh, so I'm just going to select the um, the CCRs there, so it'll only pay attention to that. Um, so, from here, I'm going to uh, I want it to move from all the way to the right to all the way to the left. 
Um, so to do that, um, first I'm going to select about five, uh, a little over five and a half seconds, and um, and instead of it being 21, which is just on the other side of the star, I want it to be 16, so then the picture will be right here, right on the other side of our 16 CCRs. And to move the whole picture over, I need the end to be negative 64, um, because it's 64 um, pixels wide. So then it will move all the way over, and the, this, this left side will be at negative 64, and, it's, and the right side will be just on the other side of the left side. So, um, now that's all set up, I can just say add, and let's take a look at it. There we go, so then you can read it as it scrolls across. Um, if you wanted to change that so that it scrolled from left to right, all you have to do is switch those numbers. So we're going to start it at negative 64, so it's waiting all the way over here, and then make it end at 16, so it's waiting on the other side. You just say modify and take a look at that. Yeah, just like that. Um, now for this image, I'm going to keep it at 16. Um, I'm going to keep it from going right to left because that's easier to read. Um, but of course, depending on your picture, you can do whatever you'd like. So from here, um, I'm going to go and change that back to large. I'm going to show you that's how you import a regular image. Now we're going to move on to a importing a GIF or like an animated image. It's got multiple images in it. So before I do that, I'm going to clear the grid here. And to clear it, I just do hold down Control and then right click. I'll just say yes, and it clears it. Now remember, uh, it's still saved over here, so nothing is gone. So um, just get it out of way, out of the way, so that um, it's not in the way of our next image. So now I'm going to load um, the spinning tree, which looks like this. It's just the spinning tree popsicle, or lollipop, that's just spinning in circles over and over and over again. Um, so I'm just going to select that, which as you can see is a GIF. Um, and it detects. It says, hey, this contains 10 images. Which one do you want to open? So you could open it from any point um, in those 10 images. I'm just going to go and start at 1. Um, and it loads that first image there. Um, we can do all the same stuff we did with the other image with this one. Um, all I'm going to do this time is just move it over so that it's centered on our um, on the CCRs. Um, so there we go, and it essentially crops it, crops out that left side because I moved it over. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to do any editing, so um, instead of just setting the grid bitmap, I'm going to set the grid bitmap and add the image at the same time. So when I click on that, um, it converts that image to the grid bitmap and adds it to our list using spinning tree, the name of the image file we have, um, and it just adds the 001 to it. And then it imported the next image from that file as well. So now we can just keep clicking add image, set grid bitmap and add image, and it will just step through all those images. And when it gets to 10, it just starts over. So it loaded the first image again. So you could just keep on going for as long as you wanted. Um, in this case, though, I just want those 10 images. So I'm just going to bring it back. But you notice it still has the next image loaded um, so that when you select other pictures, um, it's still loading the grid bitmap there, but you can't see it because that image is there. So if that um, gets annoying or feels in the way, you can just change the view from image file um, to grid bitmap. Um, and you can always switch back if you wanted to load the next image and set the grid, bit, grid bitmap again. Um, but then you can, you, if you want that out of the way, just set, select grid bitmap. Um, so from here, <coughs> I'm going to set the grid mode back to standard like I did before. So then it's all ready to um, add an action for it. Uh, so now I'm going to move this over. Um, and I'm going to start right here and just select three of those little time boxes there. Um, and notice our manual clip is still set where it was before. Um, uh, and this time I don't want it to move, so I'm going to set the start and end to zero, zero. Um, and this time, since I have 10 images that I want to do the same thing with, um, I can just use this add plus button. Um, so it's just going to add 
from uh, that image um, from what I selected and then it moves on and selects the same time and selects the next image. Um, so then you can just keep pressing add plus to add all the images um, that you that you wanted. So now let's take a look at that. And there you go. So you notice if, it feels like it ends a little abruptly so if you wanted to add it again you can just select all those and do control C to copy it and then just move it along and control V to paste it um, and then it will just look like it's spinning longer. There we go. Now if you wanted it to spin faster or slower um, you can use this uh, set group time range button so say I wanted it to spin um, well so you first you select uh, all the all of the actions here and then um, just by you know left click or you can hold down control to add more to the to what to your selection um, and then you select how long you want it to go so say I want it to go you know from six and a half to eleven and a half seconds um, then I just say set group time range and then it distributes it makes uh, all those effects fit within that selected time range um, so now it should spin slower. And there you go. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this out and load it back into our S5 sequencer. Okay, and now let's just go ahead and take a look at it in here. Oops, here we go, with the music. And there you have it. I thank you for your time and I hope you have a superb day.